What time is my apology to the culture of collaboration? Leader fan. Fan Radio Network. Excuse me? And KFAN.com. Two minutes. No, one minute and 57 seconds. Past the hour, 3 o'clock. That is Central Daylight Time. Bumper to Bumper Show is on the air. It's live. It's local. And it is a three and one half hour tour on an increasingly overcast Wednesday afternoon here in the mid, in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and uh, St. Louis Park. I host the program. My name is Dan Barrero, former Einstein Wretch newspaper of the Twin Cities. And I did once upon a time buy my uh, ink in 50 gallon barrels. I wonder how much more expensive a 50 gallon barrel of ink is today in these inflationary times, in these newspaper stressed times, than it cost, let's say, back in the sort of the newspaper heyday, going back to, if you want to believe it was the heyday, um, a lot more money was spent in various metropolitan newspapers. They were a lot more vibrant before the internet age. Any idea? I I should know how much they used to spend, but are used to cost, but I don't know now. Yeah, to know what they would cost g- now. Do they? Do they generally? What do they cost now? Or do what do they cost then? And do they still come in fifty gallon barrels? Probably not. I think that's they all probably come too. in tight cartridges, like you would get at Office Max down the street here. Mm, that's probably true. I bet you we've got some uh, intrepid reporters out there who can do the work for us via the Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line, which is wide open six four six eight six. Looks like intern gals here as well. Welcome She's back. Here. Good to have her back. She's Fine. flexing after helping us out well, big time. I was going to say, uh, I, I unbeknownst, I had no idea that uh, she was. I wanted to give you all the credit for the sound that got pulled, not just the sound, but then the presentation of uh, some comments made by uh, one of our favorite political wonks. What's his name? Brian McClung. Brian McClung, who now, by the way, is getting national opportunities on national TV shows because of us. That's how we work. It's, we we do change we lives. We just distribute. That's it. And McClung had predicted the day before the big the uh, big announcement took place that indeed um Walls Waltz was going to be the guy. So sometime over that night or the next day I see this nice little I don't know um sound I guess it was a tweet with a cool image and then it, the best part is whenever the individual who is you're listening to is speaking, what do they call that little Like the radio symbol, waves, radio like the waves. levels. Oh, it's tremendous. They're bouncing. And I gave you all the credit for it. It, it, turn, it turns out it was Intern Gal. Is that correct? 100% Good correct. Good work, Intern Gal. Yeah, we appreciate Kara helped that us on. That was on, two, on Monday. Yes. When McClung joined. Right. And then she did it on Monday, and it was just locked and loaded, ready to go yeah, on Tuesday, very nicely, uh, moments after executed. the announcement. That, Dan, is what we call collaboration. That's is that why you're apologizing to the culture of collaboration? No. Because you saw how the alignment and the collaboration of Bumper to Bumper worked on Monday into Tuesday? I like to think that that uh, process could have been executed in any decade without the fancy name. That's true. Just called uh, teamwork. Back what in we the do. day, it was just teamwork. What we do. Or what we do. Yeah, yeah that's true, too. Um, or as we say, that's what you pay us for. No, this is um, this is a different... And, and I, I'm still wrestling with whether I should apologize, whether the story has reached a point where I need to apologize. Or is that still premature? Or is it, again... Are we we coming to grips with the fact that we we live in two different worlds? When I say different worlds, I mean the world of college football and the world of professional football. When it was rumored and then confirmed that Jim Harbaugh was coming to town and would interview to be the next Vikings coach after Mike Zimmer was dismissed, I was aroused. Not going to lie about it. I, I I have great respect for what he's done as a coach. I was intrigued, too. I trust. I understand that he's, I mean, I'll use the Walls term, weird. He's an extremely weird. He That's made, putting it lightly. He made weird famous before Walsey has used it against the, uh, against the Sharks. But I still was intrigued because I said, well, you know, yeah, maybe it is strange. Maybe it's only going to last four years. But, my God, he does seem to know how to play or how to coach football. 
college football and pro football. And we all know how it went. I mean, he was here, and then he allegedly left in the middle of it, assuming he was going to get the job. And half of, uh, I was going to say Winter Park, half of TCO Performance Center loved him. And the other half thought he should be arrested. <laughs> it was like that was the that was the yeah. the, the range. There was opinion. a sea change like after lunch, yeah, apparently. Yeah, it's exactly it. It was going great until I, like three thirty. I don't know if he started speaking in tongues or, you know, what he did. But ultimately, as most of you know by now, he didn't get the job. And I've um not anti KOC, but I've always there have been several times where I've projected and wondered, well, how in the fork in the road that, that that decision represented, I wonder what the Vikings would have been like two years in if we had taken the Harbaugh fork. And you can still ask the question. It's he, and Especially now that he's back coaching in professional football. But there's a part of me that even though I've said, look, you may be making a pact with the devil, devil with Harbaugh in so many le- ways, the cheating scandal, um, stolen plays, which, of course, Harbaugh continues to insist just as recently as late last week. I I own up, and I take responsibility, but I have nothing to take responsibility for in this case. I knew nothing about whatever that was. Don't tell me I did, because I didn't. Period. Full stop. End of story. So it's still coming up. And you can say, well, what are you in this for? To feel good? Or to win. And that's pretty cynical, but let's be honest. If the L.A. Chargers of Anaheim have a dominant season this year, a breakout season, is there a person, is there a single Chargers administrator or Chargers fan that's going to go, not with him leading the way? No, I'm sorry. By the way, maybe I'm talking myself out of the apology that I was suggesting I needed to give. (laughs) But the new the new wrinkle in the story, which I'm sure you're familiar with, is not related to the uh, potential the um, play stealing scandal, right? It's about as harsh a penalty, I think, as the NCAA, yeah, you know, gone but almost forgotten, has ever levied on a coach, certainly a coach of his stature, completely unrelated, utterly and completely unrelated to the um, the play-stealing story. What was the name? Stall- Connor Stallions? Connor Stallions, yeah. yep. This has to do, apparently, with um, recruiting violations during the COVID-19 era, correct? Yes, exactly right. So the NCAA has imposed a four-year show-cause order on Harbaugh. Here's the press release. This goes back again to recruiting violations, they allege, during the COVID period of time. Throughout the investigation, Harbaugh denied his involvement in the violations, which were overwhelmingly supported by the record. Harbaugh also refused to participate in a hearing before the committee. Harbaugh's uh, violations of the COVID-19 recruiting dead period are level two violations, but his unethical conduct and failure to cooperate With the membership's infractions process, specifically his provision of false or misleading information, is a level one violation. So technically this means that if any NCAA program attempts to hire Harbaugh during this four-year stretch, it will have to go to the NCAA and say, here's what we're petitioning that you let up on the four-year punishment. Uh, And and we're going to try to convince you as to why you should make that um, alteration to your original punishment. Good luck. So, do I have to say, t- at some point, does the collective weight of all the Harbaugh stuff say, I can't necessarily accept the usual sort of separation of church and state, as in college football, Sky Uma football, rah 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 football, and pro football, and the idea of, I don't, you know, I don't have to spend time with him. I don't even have to look at him all that much. But if he makes my football team much better, I, I'm i going to be okay with it. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I do need to apologize to the culture of collaboration, which went another way. In this case, it would be Quasi who made the decision to go another way because 
at some point, doesn't, like I said, the collective weight of all this kind of make you sick? And I heard what he had to say about the Stallions thing. Yep. He's utterly unbelievable on it, in my opinion. Now, Mason has kind of played it both ways with us, hasn't he? I thought at first he was on Harbaugh, and then eventually he said it is possible that he didn't know. Well, kind of, yeah. The one thing Mace consistently said is, well, just make him federal charges and have him testify, and then we'll, we'll yeah, know. Yeah, that could be true. But he never really took a stance. And then if you remember, last year there was a court date set on some of this stuff, and then right before it, Harbaugh just said, we'll accept the Big Ten suspension. We don't need to go to court yeah, and do all of right. this, which should also tell you something. That's true. That's very true. So anyway. They exactly fight it. But, I mean, I, I, I see this, too, and I'm going, how sleazy, in all seriousness, how sleazy do you get, and at what point are you compromising everything, even on a pro football level, continuing to align yourself with this guy? It, it, it It's it's really getting thick, is it not? I mean, oh, it's, it's, it's just you know smelling. how I felt. Yeah, on the last one. Yeah, I, but I don't know if you knew that this one. Maybe you did know. Oh this yeah, was coming. Absolutely. I I had lost complete touch of this aspect, this part of the story, and I go, you know, there's a part of me that that again, the NFL technically can take action and occasionally has. I doubt they will in this case. I'll be shocked if they do because I think he's too high profile. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I'd be stunned. But. In all seriousness, if you're in that organization, unless you think it's all trumped up, and again, he's, he's, I hate to say this, he's a bad liar, man. He, because he's, he's, I think he's delivered this brand of Harbaugh chutzpah so much that he's, he believes this BS. And that's what it is. He has convinced himself somehow that he is above the rules or the rules are different or everybody's out to get him and, if I just do, you know, nose to the grindstone and do the things I know that I'm supposed to do, then I will be true to myself. If clearly Jim Harbaugh being true to himself is a sleaze bag, that's what we're, I think, getting further confirmation of it. I, I could folksy my way out of it and kid my way out of it. I just don't know if I can anymore after this latest salvo. Well, and why would he feel any different than he does? Because he's laughed every, he's laughed last every step of the way. Even so, so much that his agent most recently is saying, Jim Harbaugh's got an $80 million contract to coach the Chargers. Why would he worry at all about what's going on at Michigan? And that's 100% true. That's why everybody knew he was probably on his way out for an NFL job after that that last season, where he won a national championship cheating with players that he cheated to get. That's it. From 2020 to 2024. Yeah, it's, your, more, it's your football. Well, the more I think about it, basically what you're saying, I think what I'm saying is that Jim Harbaugh is the Donald J. Trump of coaching now what's happening to our minnesota twins they started so promisingly at wrigley a couple of nights ago with a they fashioned i believe a three nothing shutout victory got clobbered last night and they find themselves still time but down in the um getaway day game at wrigley looks like a beautiful day at wrigley by the way six to two cubs six twins two uh twins I should, I should say Cubs are batting um, in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And um, didn't the local hero hit a hit a dong in the first inning? Bush, didn't Bush go deep to yes. right? He hit like a moonshot to right he against did. the wind, by the way. The wind's blowing in today. It's been blowing in the whole series, as we talked about with Provis yesterday, which is pretty unusual for this uh, time in the calendar. Global warming. That's what we went with yesterday. But... Um, so Joe Ryan lasts two innings, and then he's got some some tightness, some tricep tightness. Is that is that what he gets pulled early? That's what the reports from Wrigley, including Dan Hayes from the Athletic, mm. uh, that's uh, ten minutes ago. That's what he tweeted out that it's right tricep tightness, and that's why he left. Apparently, looked over to the dugout and said, "No mas." Yeah, that's unfortunate. So hopefully the llama will give us an update after the game on what's going on. And we on. got we lost a half game yesterday because I don't think Cleveland played, but I think Cleveland's got a double header today. So if we lose this one and they sweep, we could lose another a game and a half. We'll see how that goes. But uh, we're not uh, playing the Chicago White Sox anymore. And the, the Cubs have not been great, by the way. The Cubs are buried in their division. Technically, they're in the wild card chase. But as Ron Coomer told us the other day, they they got to climb over like about 12 teams, I think, to be uh, much of a factor. So it's been a disappointing season for them. Yep. But um, they are in good position. 
it appears right now, uh, but still uh, three opportunities to do something about the uh, Cubs 6-2 lead. Can you give me an update? U.S. Women's Olympic Basketball. Maybe I should hit the sounder since we have it, and we're not going to have many more days. To I have it on it, right? TV. I, I haven't looked up, though, in the last couple of seconds. I'll give you one quick update while you look for the sounder, that the Guardians lost game one of the doubleheader oh, to the Diamondbacks 7-3. Oh, to three. Interesting. Second game of the doubleheader about 10 minutes from now. So as it stands now, the Twins trail Cleveland by 3.5. The Guardians have lost four yeah, in a row. they've been slumping a little bit. That's very true. <laughs> Side, I think it's quarter final round. Quarter final round. We are uh, U.S. women's team coached, of course, by Cheryl Reeve, is taking on Nigeria, correct? Yes. And, and I'm going to send it back to the uh, Olympic desk. Intern in- Galcara has the update for us. She found it while I was doing the twins. What do we got? Okay, we're ahead right now um, with 52 33. Ooh, 19 points. Interesting. So It was close in the first quarter. We're kind of pulling ahead. Still late first half, I think, right? I don't even go on to the second half. Isn't it the – we'll double check, but I, I don't think the third quarter has begun yet. So it's yeah, halftime. It, it was – um, yeah, it was like closer than you thought it was going to be, and it looks like we've finally taken care of uh, a significant business there um, and would then advance to the uh, semifinals without Caitlin Clark. I'm glad you said that because yeah. I was thinking about it as I was watching the first half today. Should the U.S. do what they're supposed to do and finish off the medal with the gold, will your favorite head coach take some kind of Caitlin Clark cheap shot in the post-game press conference? 100%. I think so, right? No, I don't, I don't, I mean, yeah. I think I, she'll have something to say. I Whether she should or not is a different conversation. I would just take the medal and say this has been a great experience, but I feel like at some point she's going to say something Caitlin Clark related. I think, or Caitlin Clark adjacent. I think that's very likely. A lot of people questioned our team, who we brought over, who we didn't. Looks like we did okay. Something in that vein doesn't yeah, that sound? That's doesn't that track? I think yeah. I think it'll be it'll be it'll be passive aggressive yes. like that. Yes, it won't be quite as frontal. The question will be because she's gonna she's gonna be asked, especially if they dominate. Uh, she will be asked by somebody. Do you feel some vindication? That all the discussion and all the second guessing about Caitlin Clark. That's true. You guys end up not only winning, continuing the winning winning streak, which is ongoing for decades. 58 right now. Exactly. Uh, but you, you had no difficulty doing it at all. Do you feel some vindication? And that's going to be the key for her. That's the test. Uh, the test is, does she go, hey, look, I, we, we've talked all that through. I'm done with that. I'll, let's, just, let's just concentrate on what's going on here, which I think would be a perfectly acceptable answer. Or will she go a little further, venture down that road, like you say, and just br- volunteer, bring something up. Like, anybody seen Caitlin Clark around? <laughs> now, that might be a little frontal even for her. Yeah. But I, who knows? But in, she's in also, the you know, victory. Yeah. Of a gold. By the way, I don't like the a look of the gold medals at all anymore. Have really? you seen them? No. Yeah. They're gaudy. That's no, 2024. The gold medal used to stand for something, I thought. It used to be subtle, very, very beautiful, but. Now it's this huge rock. What is that all about? Why has everything got to be bigger? Because they have to keep and pushing this, the envelope. Maybe this has gone on for the last several Olympics, and I haven't noticed. Have you noticed how big they're garish looking? No. I don't even think they're attractive. I didn't. I, I didn't notice the size, but as I told you, I've lost myself in the fact that they've got a piece of the Eiffel Tower in them that they took the remnants of whatever renovation they did on the Eiffel Tower and put some of, the, oh, of that yeah. metal. You, you, you were so, very emotional about that. I, yeah, I'm verklempt. Yeah, well, it was a good idea. It's clever. So idea. I'm pretty much lost in that concept. And I so every time they show the medals, I'm okay. always looking for that part of the medal to see what they did with the Eiffel Tower. So I don't know if I'm the best test case. Um, you might not be. And and maybe, the, I mean, they, they're all, they're not different depending on what the sport is, right? No, I mean, they're I, all the same. I've I don't know I maybe maybe so is there is there something else that they wear around their neck besides no the medal would that be it they just get the lanyard or whatever it is yeah, maybe that's I, a little garish for you I don't I just yeah I don't did you also ever figure out what they also get handed you know they're always holding like a little box did you did you know what that is hmm. have you noticed that I've not it's a special edition Olympic poster oh. Some uh, somebody unveiled it on TikTok or Instagram well, how could it back be a in the box, village. Box all folded up. Well, it's just rolled up like oh, a poster would be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, not every Otherwise, poster is already framed it'd be for you. It's already wrinkled. Yeah, no, it's 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 rolled up okay, nicely. So you could still, if you want to unfurl it, yes, someone will do that for it, you. It, it won't have big wrinkles and creases in it. Correct. Oh, that would seem important to me. Like, um, what was the thing that came that where you couldn't open the box? The thing that you, the, was it the Paul Newman thing? Yes, it was. <laughs> like, yes. not everything comes like that. No, that 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 was. Um, <laughs> this is more. That was. You got to uh, do it yourself. You'd have thought that that there there was like precious jewelry in there. <laughs> Well, there was in a way. Uh, in a sense, there was. Yeah, a piece yeah. of uh, American history, 1968 Democratic National Convention history. Uh, all right, let's do this. Let's remind folks that even though it's Wednesday, we're moving the inbox to today. Email Guardsy, jg at kfan.com. I probably should have sent that email out earlier, but he can use the contributions. There's a lot of good fertile ma- I think there's the, the material. The, the territory is very fertile right now. There's, there's, there's lots, I think, to cultivate. And uh, Kessler will join us, uh, not in studio today. Is that correct? He'll be on the phone? Correct. Cassie. I can't confirm if he's in Eau Claire at the Walls oh, Harris Rally. That's maybe a good point. Maybe we'll have to ask him if that's where he, he was today. What do you think is possible he's there clandestinely because he's supposed to be above the fray politically? Like and Connor he, Stallion? Yeah, and he doesn't want anybody to know that he's actually there cheering on the Democratic duo? I don't think he's fooling anybody, no, that's, if that's what he's thinking. <laughs> that's and that's not even a rip. That sounds like a rip. <laughs> it's not a rip. Uh, no, it's a very pl- a very gentle uh, jab is what it is. Let's do this. Let's make this the bottom of the hour pause. Uh, keep the uh, text coming in. Several have responded to the first segment of the program as well. Uh, we'll try to cover some of those. I've got a Chipotle controversy we've got to cover today as well. Have you heard about this one? I have. A significant, we, it's actually kind of old news, but we haven't gotten to it. But we will today. JGKFan.com to get in on the inbox fun a day ahead of schedule. Generally a Thursday bit, but because we're going back to TCO Performance Center tomorrow to uh, visit with the Vikings, we thought today would be the day to give the inbox proper attention, and that is scheduled for, as I said, 4.30 this evening. Uh, is it confirmed that among our guests tomorrow... Quasi Adolfo Mensa is going to join us from the exclusive Fan Radio Network Perch, or is that still to be determined? I'm going to use general manager speak. Okay. The intention is to have Quasi Adolfo Mensa at okay. the Perch tomorrow. All right. I did confirm and check that today. All that right. is uh, that is the plan. We are ironing out what time that will be and what the details are, but Quasi is expected to join. Kevin Seifert is also expected to join, correct? He from is. The perch? That is confirmed. Uh, Don't tomorrow? know the time yet for that either, but he's coming up. That's outstanding news. Vikings' first preseason game, I believe, is this Saturday, 3 o'clock, 1 o'clock pregame. Okay. It is. And did you hear the breaking news about the simulcast? Um, I think no, it broke yesterday. No. Your guy, JJ, not McCarthy, Justin Jefferson, will be mic'd up for, I think, the entire third quarter to just talk to Pete and Bursich oh, nice. and Lieber. And so, obviously, it's the third quarter of a preseason game. I think it was confirmed JJ is going to play today, uh, McCarthy. Um, so, we'll get some intrigue there. But uh, Justin Jefferson is going to be basically part of the broadcast for the third quarter. Well, we've just, if indeed it's confirmed that McCarthy is going to play, there will be nothing but intense interest, despite the fact that it's a preseason game, playing a lot of scrubs in the preseason opener, right? I mean, that changes everything. McCarthy is the curiosity piece that everybody is curious about, right? We know why position he plays um, and the investment in him and the hope that he can be the quarterback of the future. So that right there, you're going to have uh, Bafo ratings, yes. I would think. Yes. And great interest no matter how long he's out there, no matter who he's out there with. Because it was interesting. I I, I, said, I I think it was yesterday I saw a comment from uh, the Atlanta head coach. Is that Raheem Morris? Yes. Saying that... Um, the guy you wanted at the quarterback position, Michael, Michael Penix, Penix, will play in their first preseason game. And I tweeted out a challenge, your move, KOC, and he obviously accepted the challenge. <laughs> Maybe it's the obvious, but no one, no one really knew exactly what the plan was. I, I, do we? How much stock do we take in the fact that according to the first depth chart, JJ is the backup quarterback? Because I. Seifert has told us previously that it is his belief, or was his belief at least, that if in game one, perish the thought, Sam Darnold got hurt, that he doesn't believe McCarthy would be the guy who replaced him. Right. Now, I guess technically that could still happen. Yeah. If you if you if you keep three quarterbacks, but to that extent, then wouldn't you wouldn't you go ahead and 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 make JJ the number three guy in the depth chart? You could. 
Or is that is that too humbling for his ego? I just think everybody knows what's going on here. Okay. To me, there was no reason to ever mess around. Just make J.J. the backup quarterback, and if you have to go to him, see what happens. We've seen Mullins, right? I mean, Mullins isn't going to come in and save the season. No, he can make a play or two. He can, he can for either team, too. You know, yeah, which yeah. is fine. But that doesn't rule out the possibility that they say well, we don't want to put him in that fast. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, you, because again, everybody, even if you know, if everybody knows what is going on here, that doesn't necessarily mean you're convinced that that's how quickly you'd want to put him in in a pinch where the main guy somehow gets hurt. J.J. already he's starting to get some time with the ones. It was this week, wasn't it, or late last week that Has he started. Has anybody start- asked the question you want asked of him yet? I don't think he met the media today. He won't be asked. I listened to part of it. No one in this town is going to ask him. Nobody. And do you think someone should? Yes. Do you think we should have at the combine? Well, here's, what, here's what I would say. The longer it goes, the sillier it'll seem because it'll feel like, well, th- this is the yeah. season. But that goes back to that's why you clear the decks. On, on that question, going back to any of the mini camps. Yeah, or the and combine. I, or the combine, any of this stuff. Yes, it's an absolutely. Now, we pretty much know what he's going to likely say. He's probably going to say, I don't want to get into it. He's not even going to answer the question that you're asking directly. But, you know, I now it will be viewed as, well, why? It's awfully late, man. What, would you, what do you expect him to say at this point? The season's about to begin, blah, blah, and blah. Um, twins got the wind blowing in just saved the twins from giving up a uh, a two run dong there, but they still trail now six to two. A couple texts have come in regarding my uh, Harbaugh rant early, and br- I remember I'm a Harbaugh obo, but you respect his coaching come acumen, on, man. That is, I, I I think part of what what triggered it for me that wasn't just this the the NCAA story, but also listening to what he had to say when he was asked about. The Connor Stallion story, I, and I, I, I don't know if that was the first time he'd been asked it, or the first time he answered it extensively, and it just was so fraudulent. Um, this is from six one two guy. Please explain to me how Trump is anything like the sleazy cheating Harbaugh. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm not even going to respond to it. That's one of those where you just let the text speak for itself. Let me repeat it. Please explain to me how Trump is anything like the sleazy, cheating Harbaugh. Cheating, keyword there. And now, wait, am I doing what I ripped? See what I did there? Walls for doing? A little bit, yeah, but it, it still yeah. makes the point. Harbaugh might be, but on the other hand, here's another way to look at it, according to uh, Texter612. Harbaugh, Harbaugh might be a terrible human being, but comparing him to Don, John, Donald J. Trump is a bridge too far, No. Now, that would seem to indicate that it's just football, Dan. That <laughs> it's not our country. <laughs> oh, it's too good. Uh, do, do we have an explanation, by the way, why JJ missed practice yesterday for personal reasons? Has that been resolved? Do we have anything to worry about? Is he back today? He's back today. Okay, that, so I know the answer to the last question. So he is, is back well, today. All is well with the world. Mm-hmm. It seems like it. He was back there today. It's, I, Darisaw was back today. I think he missed some time yesterday. So everything, uh, and that's according to Seifert. I was following him just during the last break. Seems like everything's fine there. That's good news, correct? To have those two? Yeah. yeah I mean, I, you'd, you'd rather have it that way, correct? I would. Most people would. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kessler will join at 530. A couple of uh, Walsy nuggets that are getting some attention. And I can't tell whether this is an attempt to spin or there might be something to it. But I've read it from several accomplished uh, political reporters that there's a growing belief that Josh Shapiro might not have wanted the job as VP, as running mate, as intensely as our guy Walsey might have. And the theory is he, to a certain extent, he wants the whole enchilada. He 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 sees himself as presidential timber down the road, and that as such, um, it may have made it easy for uh, for Harris to go the route she did, even if she thought the better political move was to take the governor of a swing state. Again, is that spin? Is there some truth to it? Politico. Alleged, according to Politico, after Shapiro met with Harris Sunday, he called her team and said he was, quote, struggling 
with the decision to leave his current job as governor in Pennsylvania in order to seek the vice presidency, unquote. Now, if that's accurate, I mean, it, it, you want somebody who's all in. Yeah, right? you need somebody who's you all need in. somebody who's got to be committed to the bit. That doesn't. That almost sounds like, don't pick me. If that's, again, accurate, not spin after the fact to try to explain for those who are who believe that that was the better choice. I'm in that group that believes that was absolutely the better choice, all things uh, considered. But we have, it's fair to say, two candidates, both Trump and Harris, who to this point have been asked by political wonks to, on the basis of who they pick for VP and on the basis of their rhetoric, try to spend more time, less time arousing their base and more time reaching out to moderates, correct? Yeah. And neither has taken that advice. Trump has not taken that advice at all. And to this point, I don't think Harris has done it and uh, certainly hasn't done it in terms of the decision that that she made there. And again, I, I you know, Wall, Walls is not a commie. We got to be careful when we talk about left, right, whatever the case may be. But he's, I, by all, I think most people's accounts, um, he has governed very differently than when he was a uh, national legislator. Correct, in right? Con- in the in Congress. Of Congress, there's not. Yep. There's been a lot of talk about you know perfect the NRA loved them, perfect A rating for them across the aisle, across the aisle, the whole bit. Mm-hmm. There hasn't been a lot of across the aisle stuff done. Uh, Lately, I don't. I don't believe. Respond to the first part of your Shapiro discussion. Yes, that he may have eyes on the on the White House. One thousand percent, he seems like he does, mm-hmm. and he wouldn't be the first, right? No, no, it's it. Yeah, and so I'm sure he's perfectly comfortable waiting for his moment in the spotlight, but especially the, if he thinks he can do more in Pennsylvania that's or whatever. True, but it, VP, you know, it could be a, a blessing or a curse about what impact it has if that's your main aspiration. But it doesn't have to be. A, uh, a curse to maybe say, well, I just don't want to be in that job because it's not, it's pretty thankless. It's tended historically to be a pretty thankless task. So I'd rather continue to be governor, have that high, that high profile and not have to hold the president's hand. You know, like most VPs are often forced. Right. To. And if they lose, does that make yeah, him right. less That's appealing true. the next time around? Or if even if they win and let's say they win another term, how often do we see, I know it's happened some, but the vice president of yeah. a of a you know a one term or two term president getting the nod the next time to even be the nominee, I don't think it happens a ton. ton no, no, very successfully. Very, that's very true. Uh, Shapiro did not want his wagon hitched to Harris. That's possible. Um, Shapiro wants no part in what Harris is to bring to the table. Maybe that's she. He's he's playing the role of good soldier in that state. We'll see. Uh, where that goes uh, from here, I'm not exactly sure. Um, <laughs> some good ones coming in today. I'm not going to lie; they're definitely it's going to be a wild couple of months. Some good ones, yeah. Just FYI, in case you were wondering. <laughs> no, I <laughs> thank you for the reminder. I'm pretty sure you saw it coming, but yeah, it's going to be a wild. It's, it's yeah. going to be a wild couple of months. Yeah, there's not any uh, not any question about that. Um. Garzy, this is to you directly from Brent in Raleigh, North Carolina. Coach will not bring up Caitlin Clark for two reasons. She knows the USA didn't need her to win. She needed to be on the team for eyeballs. Duh. Um, Yeah, the ratings. Well, maybe it'll pick up now that you're in the, you know, getting down to the last couple of games. Usually the gold medal game is okay from what I remember reading when all of this was going down a month or so ago. I don't know if they're great consistently, I think though. they've been, yeah, so far I think they've been dreadful. Yeah. Attendance does not look great at the moment wherever they're playing Nigeria. So who won the, the first semifinal was, uh, Fr- I believe, France and Germany. In the quarters, in you the mean? women's, For yeah. The women? I believe. I don't know. I'll pull it up. I think France, when I saw there it was definitely France playing somebody. And I think France was dominating when I was watching it. I don't know if they're a threat to us. I don't know who. I don't know if anybody's a threat to us. You mentioned. So is Belgium still in the mix? Belgium beat Spain today, seventy nine sixty six. France beat Germany, eighty four seventy one. And Australia... Saying. Routed Serbia eighty five to sixty seven. Of course, the men's side, Australia blew a twenty was it a twenty four point lead to Serbia to a Joker and company, and they came back and and won the thing. U.S. men next round is when tomorrow, I believe so. Yeah, 
Let and me, it's uh, Serbia. We're playing Serbia in our in the other in one of the two semifinals. Anthony um, Edwards ready to go. Who was the seventeen points a game? Who was the um, track and field star? U.S. track and field star today. I believe this was today. Oh, I didn't watch today. Hold on. Might as well do it again. Yeah, get the music. U.S. track and field star male comes from way behind. Was it a was it 400 meters? That's what I got to double check. Are you talking about Quincy Hall? Yes. The out of nowhere comeback in the 400 meters. I will say again, man, and and, and by the way, that has woke has, has awakened the echoes. The video, in part, because today I believe is this former track star's 72nd birthday of. A runner, a middle distance runner named Dave Waddle, W O T T L E, whose trademark when he ran, and we're going back to the 70s here, um, was he wore a ball cap. There apparently was no rule against that. So he wore a ball cap every event that he was at. And I want to say it might have been the 800 meters in 72 in Germany, where he's literally. In last place. Known, by the way, for a kick. But even for people who thought, okay, well, that's this is the, the style of the approach he goes. He'll be fine. He might be fine. People are going, well, no, 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 no. You're waiting too long. You're too far behind. Who are you kidding? You can't possibly make up that kind of ground. And he ended up winning the gold. The video is everywhere on it. Uh, and it's getting attention today, I think, as another example of waking up the echoes of these great mythic come from behind victories because that's track at its best is it not yes the late kick it's hard to top the late kick in olympic track really it's like a horse race very exactly yes when you see the kentucky derby and down the stretch they come somebody charging late refusing to 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 give up and to have an extra burst of energy that you say just isn't even possible so what was the name of uh, the 400 guy today it was quincy hall and he did win gold correct he did yeah he was buried in fourth, just reading from the wire story, as runners rounded the last bend, outran the it runner. Was tremendous. On the Abs- outside, then two more on the inside. Absolutely worth your time. And if, you know, you don't want to do it during the day, I'm sure I'm, it's going to be one of the featured events tonight, I yes. one would assume. Yes, correct? the 200 semis are also tonight. So it's been a it's been a good couple of days of the track now for the Americans, too. Very good, yeah. Yes, yeah. you're right. You've got Noah Lyles going for the double. He's part of the 200. It's been a good good last couple of nights. A lot of bitterness about the move, uh, moving of Dr. Dan's inbox from the, the purists are, are up in I know. arms. Things change. Well, you have to evolve a yes. little bit. And you have to... I, it, it would have gotten shorter shrift tomorrow from the perch than it does today, even though it's a day early, where <laughs> we can it can spread its wings. We could go 4.30 to 5.30 if you didn't get enough good letters. I we don't could, care. and we've gotten a nice, speaking of late surges, we've gotten a Quincy Hall-like surge of letters in the last 10, 15 minutes. So if you want to get into Dr. Dan's yeah. inbox today at 4.30, you've got about 40 minutes, jg at kfan.com. Dan likes his medals like his breasts small. That's a callback. Tweet that. Ancient uh, piece of nonsense that um, suggested I was against big-breasted women. Why is that even a topic? Well, it's because it was, I think I was writing about U.S., was it? XFL. XFL the original XFL. And I made a crack about um, the, the the tendency of the cheerleaders. And from that, it was, what do you have against big-breasted women? <laughs> it, it just, it's gone on from there. But it's an example of, of the beauty of, um, well, some would say beauty, others perhaps use other words. Of of the fan radio network culture, the longevity because that's it's that's cultural gotta sustainability. Be Twenty years ago, it was. I was in Literally high school, like twenty years ago, when I wrote that, and it's 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 twenty years later. There's still people calling back to it. What other radio station? By the way, we didn't win the Mar- We didn't even get nominated for the Marconi this year. Did there's we? a shock. Did you see who won it? No, I think it was the score. In Chicago? Chicago, they want it. Yeah, it's I've got station. no beef with the score. It's a good. Station. I like the There's score. No I like those that. guys. But yeah, we. I, I. Maybe now we're not. We're done even being nominated at this point. I'm not sure. Well, knowing us, we don't even fill out the paperwork. I'm sure there's an application that you've got Abbott's, to send in. Abbott's not going to like that. But no, I'm not even ripping them for it. Well, it sounds like you are. No, 
You say it's not worth the trouble. I I don't think it is. Has that made the score a better radio station? No. The, the nine times every uh, the Boston stations that always get nominated has that helped them? I don't know. Uh, love the Grum Gal writes. Dan likes his medals thin. Sliced meat throwback. There you go. We well got played. We got to cover them all. <laughs> now, am I wrong? You can like you, neither your you, soup or the medals can cloudy. Look, can you look up a picture of the of the you know Paris gold medal? And see, I, I, I just, I think it's kind of garish looking. Do you not like the little ruffles that they have? It's kind of like a potato chip. Uh, I like them. You do? Yeah, I think they're fine. Well, maybe I need. And I love. I'm sorry. I love the Eiffel Tower bit. It's well, no, just that, right. No, that's, that's tremendous. It's right no in the middle. That. It's right in the middle there. I think they're cool. I got a text from a friend of mine that uh, lives next to a former silver medalist from 1971 said the silver medal back then, he said, there's nothing to it. So oh, it's, right? it's nothing like the medals are today. They've grown and evolved and obviously become much fancier. I like them. I think they're distinct. I think they're unique. They've got something on the back. I don't know exactly what that is. The Eiffel Tower's on the back. They've got the rings on the back. It looks like some type of yeah, stadium on the know. back. I don't know. I For some reason, they just... Has uh, Waylon ever brought her gold medals in? That's a good question. We need I, to see if Waylon sure could show true. us her gold medals. How much have they changed would be the question, yeah. too, right? I don't... Maybe... I mean, because I'm, sure, I'm assuming they have a lot over the... Uh, Big time. Over the years. And I think they have gotten bigger, like like championship rings. Yes. I mean, these championship rings, at least in the men's sports... They weigh like forty two pounds. You can't even now. wear them. You can't even. Yeah, it's like your 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 arm will, will droop if you wear the things. Why? Why is bigger better? Why? Why does it always have to be that way? Why can't it just be subtly beautiful, understated? Well, it, it. I I feel like it's. In fact, I think didn't I? I think Reeve got mad at me. Didn't I make some crack even about the rings they had? Oh, I don't remember. I think I it might sounds have. like you might have. I might have, yeah. It sounds like something you would do. I, yeah, well, because I'm just telling the truth. They're just what? Don't be like the men that they got to be. You know, bigger means better. Make them look aesthetically pleasing. Not that they're so huge as you say that no one ever. Does anybody wear their championship ring anymore? I see them every once in a while. Troy Aikman would wear them every once in a while on TV. Some of the some of the TV commentators wear theirs when they're bo- bouncing around to NFL stadiums and things like that. I don't know about NBA. By the way, sources close to the Marconi situation can confirm the paperwork was not filled out for this particular year. Is that a, so? In, in a sense, was that a for our form of protest? It could be because we're just tired of not winning. We kind of take the approach of we don't want to be invited to any club that would actually have us in it. <laughs> well, there for may better be or worse, to that. Um, Clyde Drexler. According to Matt and Rosemont, is selling his '92 Dream Team gold medal. If you're interested in having that piece of memorabilia, he's asking something like ten thousand dollars for it. That sounds low. It does for a Dream Team. He's Drexler. It's not you know, and Drexler's a really good player. But it's a gold medal. It is a gold medal from the from that Dream Team. It's not like his McDonald's cup that you got for the extra value meal back then, which was like a gold medal to kids like me to try to collect all the McDonald's cups when you got supersized extra value meals with the Olympic logo yeah. and stuff. I still have a couple of What's them somewhere. What's the deal also? The tra- is this a new tradition that when you pose on the medal stand, you put the medal in your mouth? I don't think it's that new. I think it started here recently. You bite the medal. Oh, I see. So what yeah. is that supposed to signify? I'm, I don't know. That you want you, it? You want It's it. just something else different to do. Taking a piece out of it, that's what okay, could be. I'm happy for you. Yeah. You know me, I'm never going to be satisfied. I But uh, one texter agrees. Give me the classic medals. There's nothing wrong with, you know, a little bit of understatement. It's not looking good for our Twins Club to mount a comeback in the getaway game, the rubber game of the three-game series at Wrigley Field, where, there's, where there are thousands of Twins fans for this series. Thousands. I believe that. Now trailing uh, our, our, our local baseball heroes 8-2. to two. Eight to two. I had some Wrigley FOMO this I think week. Seventh or eighth inning. Last week when I realized they were going to Wrigley right after the White Sox series, I had some Wrigley FOMO because it is a good it's a good time, as you know. And it's a great opportunity to get over there when the twins play. Who said nineteen seventy one was an Olympic year? Somebody say that? I may have said seventy one. I might have meant seventy. Seventy two or seventy two. Seventy two. Seventy two was that was the that was Munich. Summer. That was one of the most memorable uh one. Oh, speaking of Olympics, did you see the figure skating team 
also had like a medal ceremony and a photo opportunity in front of the Eiffel Tower. Yes. What's that all about? I don't know. I just saw the headline that they were awarded their medals. I don't know what the delay was. Um, surprised that Marconi Award didn't go to the sports station in Indianapolis. What is? Do they have a sports station in Indy? They do. They have a couple, I think. Well, Dockich isn't on either of them now. I think no, he's, he's, he's on, on a, a new one. Wave, I think, at this point, yeah. He's on some station there. Yeah. But 1070, I think, is their big one. I think that's also called the fan. And I don't think they won the Marconi. But no, they'd no, be in a different category. Like they're usually like mid market or smaller market. They're a smaller category than we are. Usually, they're considered more mid range market. Yeah, that's true. That's than Minneapolis yeah. St. Paul, despite the fact that they're the best at everything. Um, <laughs> when does Golden Bachelor start his football talk? That's for Minnesota Lynx bus driver guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's pretty good. Well, I think we're in negotiations right now. They're always ongoing. And they're with always Mason. rocky with Mace, as we know, right? That's Oh, we're late, aren't we? Let's make this the top of the hour pause. Chipotle controversy to get to. I've got a couple more items regarding um, your favorite governor. And we'll prepare for the inbox at 430. Kessler will join his usual time today. Not in studio on this occasion, but he will join at, uh, is it 530? Is that the plan? It's up to you. It's your show. Yeah, we'll probably do 530.